All right, uh, let's get this started. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, as you guys have been seeing all my crazy posts on uh, Facebook, I've been working on catching up on orders for one and um, trying to get started on the next phase of our fun stuff. So I've uh, been working on uh, both uh, air version and a foam version of the tires. Um, now, by the way, I'm doing this totally different. So right now I'm actually on my cell phone and my webcam is over here because my computer is not working with any sound. So hopefully you can hear me. If someone wants to post a comment in the chat to say, yeah, we can, that would be much appreciated. So I'm not just sitting here talking to myself. Um, actually, I'm gonna do this. So, yeah, all right, good. All right, so without further ado, we're going to show you some of the fun new stuff we've been working on. All right, so again, first time trying this, so using my cell phone here to actually do this so you can hear me. My webcam here that no sound is working for some reason, which as soon as I'm not in stream area, it works, so I don't know what the malfunction is. Um, so I'm going to use that to be able to show you stuff down here. And of course, the screen for my kid here. So, um, so with doing the no prep tires, there's obviously two very different trains of thought. Um, a lot of guys want to run air pressure, and some of the guys like Frank are are still, you know, wanting to run foam. Um, I can see how both have their their perks. However, um, with in respect to the rims, it allows us two very unique things. So on the right here is the air pressure rim. Um, so you can see I do have like a secondary valve, valve channel here so that it's balanced. Uh, these ribs are slightly thinner to balance the stiffness and weight as best as I can. Um, but when you talk about like loading a tire and, and launching off the line, really your load path comes from your center drive hex through your spokes and into the beads. So really, in terms of actually making grip or acceleration, this whole center section that is in normal wheels is totally useless. So having an air uh, pressurized tire, uh, in this respect, we can get rid of a ton of weight. So to give you an example, a standard, um, a standard Proline Showtime wheel I ordered here off of Amazon. This is about 80, or excuse me, 38.4, 38.8 were the two rims. So we'll say 38.6 grams. Um, and they run pretty true. And, and these have been Frank's choice of, of wheels to go the crazy speeds he has been here lately. Um, so I use those kind of as a reference for dimensions. I wasn't really happy with how the rims actually, or how the rubber actually fit on the rims. So there's some of like the, the, the I, oops. There's some of the, the diameters here that are a little bit different, um, just to get a little bit better fit on the wheels. So that when, you, when you're mounting them up and gluing them, they fit more like our front rubber does. Um, so that's all been kind of tweaked and adjusted. And overall, um, as you can see, the air one is pretty, pretty straightforward. When you get into the foam one, that's where it gets really, really unique because of the fact that um, we can, again, not worry about the load path for driving the car forward, you know, spinning the tire because this literally just holds up the foam. So what I had done is I had printed, I'm gonna change my camera views here a little bit. So I had printed some different ones here that were a lot stiffer and thicker in this area because, you know, I wanted to try and get um, some, you know, basically some weight out of them. So this is kind of where I started. So this is how I've been printing a bunch of different versions of these. 
this one is primary. There we go. So, so that's where I started working with this. And then as I've progressed through several, several iterations of this, this crazy ice blue kind of clear thing. Now, because of the way the files come out of SolidWorks, they have like, um, I forget the, the terminology for it, but all the triangles and voxels and all that kind of stuff. So these aren't totally smooth. So I did take one, which actually I've got a tire on. And I did polish it up a little bit more. And what I'm actually gonna do is actually spray this with some clear coat. Um, the clear coat will make these very, very transparent because they'll fill in all these little little lines and voids that are in here. It's almost kind of satin finish that it printed with. So we're gonna test some fun stuff with these for Frank. So these are these are Frank's first wheels he's gonna get from me to play with. So um, these wheels, as is, are about 32 grams. So they're a little bit heavier, obviously, than the air wheels that have like absolutely nothing to them. So um, so these will be interesting for, for Frank to play with. And, uh, you know, anybody wants to run foams, they should be a lot, lot lighter. I mean, you're talking at least uh, six grams per wheel, seven grams per wheel. So around 15, 17% or so. And then these ones, so these ones with the valve in them. Now I know some people have, um, or a lot of you guys use like the, uh, let me switch my thing back here. Not that one, that one, there we go. All right, so I know a lot of you guys use the, the basketball inserts. So I got some of those. And I checked them out, and these are the like exact same weight as these. So at which point, when you're trying to design something and you want to package this all into such a tight space and try and make the wheel as light as possible, it just made more sense to me that, for one, I could install these and you know not do any damage to the wheel, but plus we can make them really small really packaged nice and well they still look like a real wheel other than being transparent um, so it'll be easier to balance less to balance the other thing go back to this all right so the other thing that i did is this side has the valve i'm going to install up through there this side is capped so the channel is still there so what you can actually do is take one of these schrader valves and you can actually cut. So when you push on them, if I can hang on to it. So if you push on them, you know, that's how airflow comes in. So you can actually nip the end of this off and thread another one in as a counterbalance, or get the focus. Or I know some of you guys use like the um, the putty or clay or whatever to balance. So there is a relief hole up in here, so you can push um, putty or clay down in here. You can push it in here. You can push lead tape in there, whatever. You can use glue, whatever. So they are not perfectly balanced straight off the bat. And I didn't want to add uh, a ton of resin in this area to try and compensate for the simple fact of when you try and cure resin, if you live big, thick pockets like that, um, there is potential for it to cure kind of funky and to crack at times. Um, I'm not using any of the plant-based resins that people use for like the miniatures and all that kind of crazy stuff. So I'm not worried about anything like that, but I just wanted to have a more consistent and solid product from, from a flex standpoint without, um, you know, without a chance of breaking anything. So this, this keeps everything a lot more balanced from a, from a stress standpoint as well. So, um, so that's pretty much it. So again, you can thread one of these in. You have your counterbalance. It's pretty close. You still might need just a little bit in the hole. Um, or you might not. I'm, I'm Honestly, I haven't played with it much. So when I was designing these, one of the things I was doing was I, and you guys may have seen my original CAD picture. So I printed these little barrels. 
And the reason for doing this was I wanted to test fit these. So instead of printing an entire wheel and trying to test fit, I just printed a whole bunch of these with different sizes and tolerances to, to get them to where we had a good fit. So the wheels are going to come with these already installed and tightened. Um, they are going to be actually extra like glued or adhesive in just for extra safety and precaution. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to include like a hose or anything crazy like that. What I am actually doing, which I don't have open, um, is I am printing basically a little gasket or a, a not really a needle, but a but a fitting for the end. So that's where I'm going to switch back over here. Oh, here, yeah, I'll do this one. All right, so I'm going to print a little insert here. And um, probably for the first batch of rims, I'll include them. And then after that, if you guys need extras or whatever, they'll only be a dollar or two or maybe you know, three, something like that maximum. But it depends on how tall I have to make them. So I went online to Amazon and I was looking at stuff to see. And I checked out the Voodoo page to see what they had. And I actually found this. So this... is a blood pressure cuff. So all I did was nip the hose a little bit short and well, there you go. So I believe, um, no bars, but anyway, when you calculate this out, so like, uh, around 80 equals about one, 1 1.5 pounds. So I put a link for this in the description. So if you go down in my YouTube video here and in the description, I, I did sign up for our Amazon affiliates, um, but I did put links to this, the valves, um, and all the other 3D printing stuff that I'm using. So the resins, the printers, all that kind of stuff. So if, if anybody wants to get involved, you know, you can easily do that. Um, honestly, if I get far enough along in all this stuff, um, I will actually maybe six months, a year down the road, I will probably just share the CAD files and some of the settings and stuff in my Patreon. So I have started that. Um, I didn't include a link, but I'll add it later. Um, if anybody's interested in actually learning more about this, because what I'm doing there is I'm starting to post more of like day-to-day uh, -day stuff, what we're doing, what we're making, the process of doing all these different things. Um, some 3D printer settings, resin mixes, um, you know, fun stuff like that. Uh, projects that we're working on, you'll see previews or more, I guess, in-depth previews of my CAD and also the, um, uh, the 3D printed car that I'm already about 90% drawn and uh, I just have to finish the wheelie bar and we're ready on that one. So I'm going to start that project next, but, um, you know, so that's, that's all in my Patreon and I'll add that link later on. So, but like I said, later on, I plan on sharing a lot of this stuff, uh, to where somebody else wants to print or play or make the, you know, make these themselves. I don't have to, this is, this is a fun thing for us to get up and running and make some money for a little bit to buy all the toys I want to, to be able to make a lot of really crazy stuff in the, in the coming years. So, so I appreciate all the support. Uh, I really appreciate um, all the, the likes and follows for our CF uh, uh, 3DFX page. So uh, if you can, you know, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. You guys know all the social media stuff. Um, and like I said, check out the links below. It's just a blood pressure cuff, but works great. So I'm going to get some of these glued up. And I'm going to get some over to Frank so he can see if he can blow them up and try and go 90 miles an hour. And uh, that's about it. Oh, I do want to show you one thing, too. So one of the things I wanted to, to explain so that everybody understands. Um, when I am printing tires in that. So to give you an example, like to print these rears, it takes about three hours. And I have 
some pretty fast printer settings that I have played with to get them to even be this quick. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, when they are printed, just to give you an idea, this is what they look like coming off the printer. Not this color, obviously, but... Um, so these are all the supports. So what I've also been doing and why some of these designs look this way, especially these ones, is everything's done at a 45 degree angle because that's kind of a, a nice angle to be able to build that. So these are all the support structure. So when I go to actually do these, there's quite a bit of like cleanup in order to make them like the finished part that you guys see. Now, that's not too bad on the plastic stuff, but when we get into the rubber, I don't have one that's like full straight off the machine here, but when we get into our, our front tires that we're doing, you can kind of see all the supports. So there's a whole ring of supports. There's, there's actually four rows, one that runs through the bead, and then three up here on the sidewall, and then there's an additional two different rows uh, down inside of the tire so and these are all these all have to be here in order for the 3d printer to be able to, to build up through the layers and have support as it as it pulls off um, so every single tire I have to take I sit here with a with a Dremel and I clean all these nubs off and then it actually goes on to this is a Helix uh, thing that um, I believe Kyle Klingforth made for gluing sidewalls on turning car tires. So I still had one that I got. And those go on. And then I sit here with a Dremel tool bit that I profiled. And well, that's how I clean up all the nubs on the sidewalls. So this is also why when some of the people um, you know, it asks for printing names or anything like that on the back side of the wheel or on the back side of the tire. I can't because this is this is how the tires build. I, I I build them all as flat as I can on the build plate, which is not normal for these resin printers. However, it is the best way to make the most uh, round and consistent uh, product for racing. So so that's why these take so long. So they take about three hours to print only three tires. I have two printers running on that, so I get six tires every three hours, and they pretty much run around the clock here trying to trying to keep up with tire orders. But this is still the fastest way to print tires, rims, any of this stuff. So um, with the resin industry, these, these printers and the price have come down so far. Um, I feel strongly that the, the, the resin companies are going to keep making way better stuff and so it just makes it that much easier to just apply more and more of this in the RC hobby so I'm I'm actually really excited about this um, we do have a bigger printer coming that won't be till March but uh, in the meantime if things keep picking up um, we may actually get another one just to try and help keep orders because I really don't want anything being longer than three weeks uh, we've kind of figured out our production, I guess, schedule and process here so far. Um, so all of that has gotten a lot better. Uh, and we're starting to catch up on orders. So in the next few days, we're going to blast through a lot of orders that are behind that I know people are looking for. And uh, I'm, I'll be really happy because they won't be sitting here on my desk or, or all over the, the area here as, as we're trying to get on to the, to the next project. So uh, let's see see some questions here uh, when will these be available um, we're pretty much gonna start taking orders now some people some people that have actually ordered the front tires the front rims and tires have already like just sent money to like hold the spot in line because we do go right by when an order sub was submitted so I have about a three page list that we've been just going right down the, the order going through to uh, to print and ship. So um, I think my wife took about 12 or 15 boxes to USPS today. There is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's probably another 14 or 15 that are gonna go tomorrow. 
Um, so again, it's just a lot of it right now is, uh, you know, it's, it's waiting on me to process tires and, and get them all sanded and, and cut some foams. I actually do have to cut some more foam. So uh, pretty soon I'll make a little bit more in-depth video showing you how I make the fronts um, with just kind of each step of the way from the foam tools I made to cutting the foams to the process of printing and some of the you know, stuff we're doing that we had to do to cure and um, and all that kind of good stuff. So we're, we're, we're trucking along. We're, we're learning a lot and I'm, I'm really excited about the stuff that we're going to be able to make in the future because it's going to be a lot of fun. And oh, one thing I have to remind people. These are not injection molded nylon. If you hit a concrete curve at 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour, they're going to break. Like, I've had one or two people ping me like, hey, I broke my wheel. I hit the concrete curve wide open. <laughs> like, they're going to break. They're going to break. You can't do that. So, please understand that these are more of a high-end, lightweight, like, go-fast thing. If you're going to test stuff and do crazy stuff and bounce off of curbs, they're going to break. So, <laughs> they're all like, I, I can make them, I can make them more tough, but then they're going to get rubbery. You know, the, they're going to be soft and flexible. And to be honest, I don't want to make like these other manufacturers front wheels where you're going to hit something, then they're going to run untrue and your cars aren't going to work. So this is, it's, it's meant to be high end and go fast stuff. So, you know, if you hit stuff, they are going to break. So they're, they're, they're as strong as I can make them within reason. I can start adding more material, but it's, it's, it's really not needed for performance standpoint. And if you're going to crash, honestly, then uh, you probably, probably should be testing with, you know, a, a more basic product, a buggy ring or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Luke, glad to hear. Glad you like them. Um, what do we, what do I think will be the benefit of air versus foam? The only thing I, I personally see right now is um, the weight. Because these these with air are only, I think, 30.2 grams. So compared to like a Showtime, you're saving 8 grams plus per wheel. 8.4. So you're taking off 16, almost 17 grams of spinning weight through your drivetrain. I don't think people realize how massive that is. That is a huge, huge amount of weight off acceleration. So I'm super excited to see uh, Frank test these because I, I still, I bet him at the beginning of summer that he was going to run 90 mile an hour. And if we got everything right and he was on a good track, he could run in the high one fives. So that's, that was my prediction after seeing uh, the no prep cars run uh, out in Pontiac here where those guys run sometimes during the summer. So just seeing the way the cars launched and ran, that was my prediction. And, and, uh, Frank's, Frank's sneaking up on it. So, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, ordering, I do all ordering through the serial, uh, 3d FX page. Um, you just send us a message there. I have a generic copy and paste that I send you over. It gives you all the details of ordering through PayPal. Um, I am looking at setting up like maybe just a Facebook shop or something like that. I don't want to go into the full trying to build a, you know, a full e-commerce page or any of that kind of stuff because really I want to keep this just as small as possible, as fun as possible. And as soon as I have to start getting into maintaining a website and all that kind of stuff, I just don't want to do it. So honestly, I'm lazy. I got too much other stuff. I'd rather, I'd rather make fun stuff. So, uh, I might try and do something like in a Facebook shop or that, but I haven't decided that I need to look into it some more. I looked into Etsy and that's like stupid expensive with the fees they want you to pay. So I'm not doing that. Um, as far as air versus foam, back to that air, you can tune foam. You just, you have the foam. like that's, that's it. 
So, I mean, we could play with some gaps and fits to the rim and stuff like that, but I mean, this is kind of it. So I, I see that as the main benefit. If you really wanted to tune or get, you know, real technical with your air pressures, there's a little bit of room for adjustment. Foam, you got what you got. Not saying it's bad. That's what Frank's running. He's, and he's a racket. So, um, let's see. Yes, I do have a Patreon. I will add the link into the description on the video here. Um, I'm going to be uh, adding more information, especially specific to the printing side of it. Um, I also am going to be adding some from the SolidWorks and design side of it. Um, it's a little bit easier because what I will do too is I get a lot of messages every day and it's really hard for me to keep up with not only my day job as a, as a designer at General Motors, but also, you know, changing out prints and, and keeping track of the rest of it. So um, my Patreon will actually be where I prioritize my responses um, just because that will help. And it's, it's not very much. It's only a couple bucks a month type of thing. But it's a type of thing where it will help us with buying resin. So to give you guys an example, I don't know. Let me show you over, over the wall here. So that's like a quarter of my crazy resin supply. And I have... I think 12 different ABS like resins um, that have either arrived or I have more coming. And what I'm going to do is I have this crazy, crazy, uh, I'll do it this way, this crazy like test print. And this is for testing and validating material. So you get some basic dimensional tests, you have some overhang tests. And then, of course, there's some, you know, different print quality tests. And then there's also, this is actually one of the rubbers that I that I use in my tire blend. And then this is like a, a bend test. And you can see when um, the different resins fatigue or fail. So this is one of the things, too, that I'm working on where I'm going to print out, basically make a video of all these different resins that I'm testing. And we're going to test them on this. Uh, I tested them on a bunch of rims I printed uh, from like 3D resin solutions versus our Resi 1 stuff um, that I really like. Uh, I've also gone through some tests with some Elegoo materials. So, but I have a ton. I, I literally went through Amazon and like ordered like a small bottle or some of them I had to order a bigger bottle. But I literally ordered like one of every single resin so that I can test so I can find the absolute best stuff for racing. And even some of the, the resin suppliers that I've just pinged questions to have actually been really interested because most of their 3D printing market is for gaming, tabletop gaming, um, you know, static models, things like that. So no one has really kind of taken it to this crazy world level of 80 mile an hour drag cars. Um, so some of them have been pretty curious on the materials and I've talked to some of them about some of the engineering resins. So I'm gonna be trying a lot of different stuff because in the end, I, I, wanna, I wanna be able to make a car that's gonna hold up or rims that are gonna hold up and are gonna be durable. And it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, did I try any of the stuff that you sent a link to on Facebook? I don't remember. Uh, you'll have to show me again which one it was because I forget. There's too much going on. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, 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 yeah, Etsy store, uh, Midwest RC. The Etsy, Etsy store would be great, except it's just expensive. They they charge you a fee on your shipping fee. They charge you a fee on a listing fee. They charge you a fee on, you know, a, a payment. Then each item you put up counts as a new listing. So you have to like, if someone buys it, you have to relist something again. So by the time, like, you know, for, for example, the, the one YouTuber that I like watching for the 3D printing stuff before I really got heavy into this uh, is Uncle Jesse. Pretty cool guy, makes lots of cool videos. If you're into the 3D printing stuff, definitely go check out his channel. 
Um, but he sold like $30,000 worth of 3D printed stuff on Etsy, and they took 14 grand of it in fees. That's ridiculous. So there's no, there's no way. So I, I'll do something else where we're kind of poking around a different way to make this a little bit easier to order and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I am afraid of is setting up anything that um, honestly locks you into a, a time to ship an order because, you know, as we've seen with the 3D printing stuff, it, it takes, it takes time. So, you know, and that's where, um, you know, like right now I've been stuck waiting on resins. So that's also why I started hunting and searching for other resins. So we have a lot coming. Uh, I did order a bigger batch, but that means air freight and everything else to get it here. So, um, you know, we'll see. We're, we're progressing pretty good. So if anybody has any other questions, I have four printers that are finished and want programs loaded and parts cleaned out of them. And uh, I got lots of tires to sand. So my wife stops yelling at me to sand these so I can pack boxes and get everybody's stuff out to them. Squarespace is one that isn't that expensive. Okay, I'll check that one. I'm actually going to open a tab right now. All right, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, front tires and wheels are still back ordered. Like they are. I believe I have about. 50 pair or so to catch up to zero. Now, I think I have about 30, 30 to 40 printed. Um, again, it's just the sanding and cleanup and printing rims. Um, so rims print faster, obviously, than the rubber. Uh, they, they go pretty quick and easy. Plus, I can fit four on a, on a tray instead of only three rubber. Um, so we have a bunch of those. So our goal is, is to try and get by the end of this week. And also I have Thursday off. Um, the end is the goal is to get by the end of this week to get like a ton of orders caught up and be anything that was placed in October is done and shipped. And then it'll just be working on November orders. So um, yes, there will be an adapter for putting air in them. Again, I, I got a link below for this, uh, the, the blood pressure cuff that you just cut the hose off of and I'll have a little fitting that can go into here and that'll fit right up into the tire or up into the rim and you can pressurize on a piece of cake. So, and like I said, the, the tires are going to come with the fittings in them. They're, they're 35 bucks a pair for um, the regular black. And I just made them a standard price. These are actually more, the foam ones are actually a little bit more expensive to print because there's more material and more supports needed. Um, these ones are a little bit cheaper, but I have to include the valves, but those are pretty cheap also, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, otherwise, just ordering is just uh, ping our CF uh, serial 3DFX page on Facebook. And I guess that's pretty much it. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? I think I got it. All right. I'm going to go change some prints out. And everybody have a great day. And I'll catch you later.